Time to catch up with the genuine champion of the oh, Western Bulldogs, the smiling Gaines assassin. Lekerola. He's an absolute icon of the football world, mm-hmm. and he's going to join us to talk about how the Western Bulldogs can possibly beat the Fremantle Dockers. Brad Johnson, come on in. Uh, good morning, Katie and Nat. I'm not going to talk to Sean. Today. <laughs> I know. The library <laughs> is on. It's game on. Can't wait for Saturday, <laughs> Saturday night. It's going to be an, an absolute ripper. How are you feeling, Sean, about it all? Oh, I'm pretty low-key this week, knowing that Fremantle will just get the job done against your boys, who barely scraped <laughs> into the finals, mate. They don't deserve to be there. They just got there because Carlton, Carlton. for two weeks in a row, decided to give up in the last five minutes of a game. <laughs> Look, we can't. I, I, I can't make up any excuse about that. You're right. We're extremely lucky to be, to be playing <laughs> finals footy. But everyone knows that Fremantle are extremely nervous about what's to come on, on Saturday night. No one wants to play the Bulldogs, so... Look, well, you've got history. Be, uh, you've got history yeah, of doing exactly. well, and and coming from that low position and swooping in and being giant killers. <laughs> Twenty sixteen. Yeah, never forget. This, this is the spot. Even last even last year, we made the grand finals outside the the top four. So this is exactly where the Bulldogs want to be in this position. They love being under pressure, the underdog status. So look, it's going to be a it's going to be a cracking game. Their game a couple of weeks ago was was an absolute beauty. Fremantle controlled that, and their their style of play that that day te- tactically was. Was brilliant. So that's the challenge for the uh, for the Bulldogs. Can they turn that around from what they produced against Freo a few weeks ago? Hey, Jono, one of the things we were kind of mentioning the other day is uh, Bevo. He loves to be the underdog, and mm. does he set he sets themes for um, games like this? Does the finals he? campaign kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, he does. He, he loves setting up different themes throughout uh, throughout the year. And, and look, we're, we've experienced that as well along the way, Sean. Where you, you get a coach that that is sort of theme based and, and loves to sort of motivate. In, in that way, some are a little bit different than others. In so so what, what is it this year? Is it yeah. jungle theme? What are we going with? <laughs> oh, I don't know what, honestly, I don't know what he's, he's going with. It normally comes out at the end of the year once the once right. the season's done. Everyone sort of talks about it and goes, well, this what motivated us, you know, throughout the, the final series or throughout throughout the season. But I did uh, I did go across his whiteboard the other day. It just had destroy dockers on it. So I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is about. Maybe you're just winding them up a little bit to uh, to come over and uh, and hit the ground running and then escape, get back down to uh, Victoria. Were you a bit devoed when you heard that Nat Five wouldn't be playing? <laughs> <laughs> Look, what about that? I was actually, uh, the, the smile on my face was bigger than normal. Even bigger. <laughs> oh, my God, Jono. That's saying something. Then, God. Yeah, but that, that, certainly, that certainly changed when 24 hours later, Liver's out with, yeah. uh, with a hammer as well. It's like, ah, oh, you that uh, has that really happened? But I suppose when you look at both players and the importance for for the size, it probably levels out a little bit. Uh, Five's a, a superstar. He's he's, um, he's a level above what what Libba can produce at his best. But Libba's form was was actually sensational sure. in the last part of the year. So the dogs will miss that uh, that grunt around around the contest. Hey Brad, um, with Bulldogs in the grand final last year at Optus Stadium, do you reckon that that they're looking forward to kind of? Revisiting, redeeming their, themselves, yeah, redeeming themselves <laughs> because you know Dockers obviously haven't been in finals for a while. Yeah, look, uh, they played so well for for three and a half quarters, and then I still can't believe they lost that granny by seventy points. With <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, it's, 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 I still can't believe it. So, look, uh, there's no. The thing is, they played enough footy over there the last couple of years yeah. um, during COVID that the, the ground isn't isn't the issue. It's just going to be the Fremantle faithful and and trying to keep. Um, you know, I suppose the, the crowd quiet in some way yeah. for, for the first part of this game and, and put Freo on the back foot. You'd be but, praying for rain too, to, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. They haven't <laughs> played well in the rain either and you guys will be able to tell me whether that's going to... Well, there's a few showers through, around. They yeah, reckon they'll clear up much, by the you know, evening. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be much at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Of course they're going to clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be surreal. This is Nathan, Matt and Sean. We are talking about what your doorbell cam might have caught, mm. uh, inspired by the woman in Piara Waters who w- watched um, pretty much in live action her um, front of her house being crashed into by a car. Yeah. The house in Piara Waters, she was in Narragin. <laughs> it's amazing. Is that Then she told him off through the she doorbell. She told him off. He got told off by a doorbell. <laughs> it wasn't a good day for him. Sat's in East Frio. Hey, Sat. Yeah, hi. How you going? Yeah, good. good. Buddy. All right, we're talking about the power of a doorbell camera. What did you capture? Yeah, so we we installed a new security camera. Hi, Nat. This is Fat from East Rio in the doggy park. Oh, he- oh, hello. How are you going? <laughs> <laughs> well, introduce yourself formally um, the next time, please, Sat. You don't introduce yourself. Start. You introduce your dog. <laughs> 
I introduced my dog. Anyway, so new security camera. We've disappeared down south for a long weekend, and we get a, a photo text from the neighbour with our pool guy's van, which has gone down the driveway and smashed through the retaining wall just next to the car oh. garage. Oh, really? So we tried to. Uh, so we gave him like the weekend to try and own up for it, <laughs> and he's he doesn't know he's got this new security camera. So. <laughs> When we get back, we've, we've heard nothing about it. And we go through, you can rewind the tapes and see what's happened. So he's basically come in to do the job, gone round the back with some pool gear, and then he's left the handbrake on. And we've got quite a steep driveway, so yes. you can just see the car slowly just trickling, and then he accelerates down the hill and weirdly smashes the wall and ends up sideways up against the wall on two wheels oh. and has just missed the car garage by about a metre. Oh. So it would have smashed through the garage and ruined our cars as well if it had gone straight through. And then he's uh, he's managed to get a tow truck in there, tow this thing off, and then you see him come back a few hours later and he's sweeping all the dirt off, and then he comes in <laughs> with, like, cement and patches up the limestone oh. wall. So he thought he was going to get away with it? He didn't tell us anything about it, and then I sort of told him, when are you going to end up to this? We've got photos, I've got video evidence, and you've done a bod, shitty job, and then, yes. sorry about the language... And then he, uh, yeah, so he agreed to, it was his fault, obviously, and then we changed a couple of limestone blocks and it cost him three, four hundred bucks. Really, it wasn't that much. Wow. Wow, um, he wasn't going to admit to it. I love it when you've got the evidence and I he's just sitting it. there waiting. And you just wait and go, and, uh, you, this is the, and this is the worst thing, and a lot of marriages have got this, when one of the partner <laughs> walks into another room and they go, do you have something to tell me? And you go, oh, yeah. my God, what do they know? <laughs> Yeah, which so one should like I own cheating. up to? Good honey, so thanks, that? buddy. Thanks, right. See you down the dog park. Um, Joey's in Kalamunda. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Hi, wow. Joey. What did your camera capture, Joey? So it was Halloween, <laughs> and I've set up a Halloween display at the front door with all the chocolates inside. Mm-hmm. And then I've left to go to a bonfire. Cause, um, and then my husband's <laughs> phone rings, and the kids are at the door. Yeah. And he goes, Joey, they're taking the stuff. So instead of just taking the chocolate, they've taken everything. The decorations bowls, and everything. Everything. So we're yelling, yeah. So we're yelling through the doorbell. Stop. The same as the Power of Waters, lady. Yeah. Put the stuff down. And they're like looking and then they panic, just take everything and run. So my husband and his mate have jumped in the car yeah. to try and go and catch them. Um, I put the footage immediately on social media, of course. Yes, of course. And, yes, yes. Um, started this massive fight in the Kalamunda area against people going, it's just Halloween, let the kids do what they need to do. No. I'm like, I they literally have stole just leave it. My bowl. No, no, yeah, no, just no. Leave no. My, my cooking bowl. Yeah, leave my um, cooking bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it got somehow back around, back around, and the mum of these kids found out and made him write an apology note, put it in the letterbox and bought me a new bowl. Okay, great. 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 Right. So well, this here's is a great deal. outcome. Um, I want to know, were the kids dressed up in costume or were they just plain faced? Like you could see No, them. they were plain, oh, plain okay. faced. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, if you can you can you can let it slide as a trick if they're a little it's a little witch and a little Spider Man. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can sort of get a little bit more. They don't get to do that. a trick. They got the treat. I know, I know. That's it. It's Halloween. You've got you it know for free. Yeah, you've got it yeah, for free. Yeah. yeah. And you've done you could have just not put anything out because you weren't home. But you were doing the right thing and they took advantage of you, little hey, swine. Joe, um, how much was the bowl that they took? Well, maybe 40. Yeah. 40 bucks. Where would you, where'd you get that one from? <laughs> uh, k- kitchen warehouse. Kitchen warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> was it like a ceramic bowl? Or was where you it get a glass all the good bowl? stuff. No, Talk the big stainless steel one. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, so yeah, like an really industrial mean. kitchen bowl. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. What always... are you going to do with that? Oh, yeah. mate, mate, exactly. What does a child want with that? Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Budding chef, probably. <laughs> I bet he's not. Just stopped his career in the All right. The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We're discussing the things that you might catch on your doorbell cam or your CCTV footage. I, I tell you what, it's worthwhile getting one put Isn't on. Isn't it, Joe? Oh, my gosh. For, like, crimes and for funny stuff yes. and to possibly see someone fall over. Some comedy. Loving it. <laughs> Sarah's in Yanjabup. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hey, All, all right, right Sarah. so doorbell camera, what you got? Yeah, so it was my cameras out the front, um, came home from an amazing wedding um, and didn't realise until the next day, obviously, what the cameras had caught. Um, slightly intoxicated, completely face planted onto my front lawn out of the Uber. Did you, um, did. you did, and you had <laughs> no did. memory of it? <laughs> I had no memory. I, I remember, like, falling, um, but I didn't know when, and we thought, oh, well, let's check the cameras. Um, the next day, obviously, we checked mm. the cameras and it captured the whole thing. 
Um, you can see my partner's face just like absolutely distraught. Oh, he was worried. Oh, just, oh like, I see Nathan would have laughed. Planted. Yeah, <laughs> he no, was I'm worried. Fake grass, fake grass. So it's I soft. can't get it's past it. Grass. You felt face first on the grass out of an Uber, and your partner's first point concerned. of call was concern. That is so yeah. strange. That's not in my world. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most hilarious thing ever. Um, and I actually laid there face down, like my arms were completely behind me. So I've like literally laid on my face. <laughs> you've, you've taken um, all the weight on your face. And I, I stayed there for 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes? <laughs> Just having a little 20 rest. minutes. Yeah. And it, it's all captured on the cameras. Nice. Um, it's gold. So um, 20 minutes because you were knocked out or 20 minutes because you no, passed out? And then why like, did your concerned partner leave you on the lawn for 20 minutes? Did he stay there with you or did he go inside? N- no, he, he actually went inside to eat his Maccas. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the concern was fleeting, it's safe to say. Yeah. He was yeah, probably he worried about the Maccas, me afterwards, to be honest. Um, ate his meal and then, and then came and got me okay. to get inside. Now you've won me back. Yes, that's right. <laughs> We're on board. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Jessica's in Redcliffe. Hi, Jess. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, can you hear us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, Sorry, great. I'm just going through the funnel. <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. Um, Come on. Radio, so my friend was cleaning my car because he has like a side car cleaning business. Yeah. And he has these jerry cans on the back of his car. Yeah. Now, he, he was inside having a chat with us and he goes to leave and he noticed that his jerry cans are gone. Um, they're just plastic jerry cans. Yeah. And they were strapped onto the back of his car. And so we've checked the footage and I kid you not, someone has come with a Stanley knife, cut the cord. And just run off with these plastic jerry cans. In like broad daylight. What? What? It's, no, it was, it was at night time, but like okay. they just. So like, someone so saw the opportunity, out. had the tools at hand, yes. danced on his jerry cans and ran for their lives. Yeah, they ran like like a raccoon. They ran with like, like a raccoon. <laughs> How many did they run <laughs> off with? Three. Two of them. Two. They cut both so, and so, just so ran. Two. So um, was it a, a guy, a girl? Could you tell, or was it dark? Um, it was dark. They were wearing high vis. It looked like a male. They were wearing high vis. <laughs> well, that's baffling. <laughs> that is criminal one hundred and one. Do not wear high vis. Wear dark. Or wear a black you. hoodie. <sighs> God, extraordinary! So that person, do you reckon they were just pouncing on? Do you reckon people were just walking around with Stanley knives ready? Do you reckon they were hoping to... they were full, or they know. just really needed jerry cans? You ran off too quickly if they were full. No, but like for the free petrol. I don't know. At this day and age, well, they are telling people not to stockpile petrol at the moment because of... the excise is going to be over soon. A lot of questions. Thank you, Jess. Tash, hello. Hello. Hi, Tash. Okay, Tash. What did you capture on the uh, on the footage? Uh, so basically, I got home from dropping the kids at school and uh, got a message that there was a missing girl in the area. So I went, well, I better check my camera. See oh, you're a responsible citizen. Oh yes. God. Yeah, you know, doing the right thing. And as I was looking, there was a clip of me pulling into the driveway. Mm. And then on my camera, there was a voice that said, she's here. <gasps> and... There was nobody home. There was nobody near my front door or anything. And then I thought, oh, am I imagining it? I kept watching it. And then I posted it online and said, can anyone, like, hear anything or whatever? And all my friends came back and said, yeah, that's a voice clearly saying she's here. (sighs) Yes, it was, like, exactly like that. She's here. And I was like, oh, my God, I think I need to go back out. Oh, my God. So what are we thinking? There was kids, like... Could they have been right near the door or the, the the camera would have captured that? No, the camera would have seen it. It's like a doorbell camera. Oh, my God. Um, Are you so kidding it, me? Yes. Yeah, so there was – and, like, we have had a few strange things happen around the house, so Jeez I thought maybe hell. I'm just imagining things. But then, yeah, no, there was this, like, clear voice that said she's here and, and sorry, everyone else. I didn't – Tash, yeah. come on. If you, once I watched that footage, I would have loudly stood up in my house and said, she's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Very tempting. How <laughs> perplexing. She's here. Do you think, is there anywhere in the garden that kids could have been hiding or anything? No, because no. it's like our garden's pretty open and yeah. it's under like a patio thing at the front. So there was, okay, it was Tash, no one Tash, there. do you think it's, a joke? So, so say if it's a spiritually thing, do you think it was, she's here, let's hide, or she's here, let's get her? <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to think, think about it's it too the, much. I think it's, it's she's here, matter. let's get her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe. Tash, it's not going to be good. How freaky. Oh, Thanks, we'll be Tash. reading about you in the news, won't we? <laughs> Nathan, Dad, and Sean. We're talking about when, when someone tells you to calm down. Yeah, stay calm. Stay calm in a situation 
like this when a ball has gotten loose from a pen and is running for your family. Stay calm. Stay calm. I don't think so. Troy's in Canning Bay. Morning, Troy. Morning, how are you? Good, oh, Troy. good, Troy. When did someone tell you to stay calm? Um, so I was on a flight heading up north for some work uh, and then all of a sudden there was a loud bang. The mask came from the roof oh. and... Before I knew it, we fell from 30,000 feet to 10,000 feet. Oh, oh that's 20,000 feet. That's well not done. great. <laughs> well done. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sat at the back and was like, you know, stay in your seat because I was planning on getting out and juggling. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, it was zero, just about zero gravity yeah. at that point, so yeah. you probably could have. Yeah, Troy, exactly. What a nightmare. Oh, it was. But, uh, yeah, no, we made it back and we jumped on the next flight straight away and Got ready for the next fun ride. Gee, that's were, rough, people, isn't it? were people crying? Uh, no, there was a plane full of uh, blokes. I don't think you really cry in front of another bloke, do you? Oh, they want to cry. These it's days fine. and age, mate, you should be Come able to on. cry in front yes. of anyone. Uh, and I think that that's a oh. circumstance that warrants it. Did people? Did you go for your phone or something to send a message that yeah. this is it? Or yeah, but anything, I mean, Troy? Poster service there was terrible. Yeah, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, right. You're like, can anyone get a bar? Can anyone, <laughs> anyone, can anyone get a bar? <laughs> As you're plummeting. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Troy, getting back on another plane immediately after that, was that a bit terrifying? Uh, yeah, a little bit, but, you know, you... You've, You've got to go to work. Time doesn't stop. You just got to go. Well, you know what? And sort of like you'd think the next one would be safer because if it happens again, that means God's done with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your time's goes, up. You know, it's time to get yeah. wipe the table with this. Yeah, one. Troy's had enough of life. <laughs> Thanks, Troy. Tracy's in St James. Morning, Trace. Morning, guys. How you going? Great, Trace. Trace. When we're told to stay calm, Trace. So I went to America with the four children just before COVID and did like a nice Royal Caribbean uh, day trip yeah. um, out of uh, Mexico. So we docked out, uh, thought we'd go on a glass bottom boat journey with the children and just show them the yeah. nice, beautiful sea in Mexico. Yeah, uh, the glass, yeah, it sounded great. Mm. The glass bottom boat was the size of an A4 paper, the part that was glass. <laughs> oh, that was the glass bit. Um, that was the glass bit. <laughs> so we're all trying to look through. Uh, we're about, yeah, we're, we're, we've passed our boat so we can see how far out we are. There's, there's no way we're swimming back to shore. And there's two guys there, and one of the guys is using a bucket to scoop out water that is um, coming through yes. the crack at the bottom of the boat. So oh. scooping out water as we're all in there, we're having a heart attack going, <laughs> How my husband can't swim, Yes, two life jackets is all we could see, two. and the kids are going, Mum, are we going to sink? So the guys are going, it's fine, it's fine, we, we know what we're doing, but we were yeah having a heart attack because, yeah, the, the water was filling up past our... Um, up past our ankles. So Tracy, with a bucket. Tracy, yeah, I want to. Yeah. I want to know, right? Two life jackets. So straight yeah. away, you you were going to get one, weren't you? Of course, absolutely. And who was going to get? Who was going to get the other one? If you had to make yeah, a choice, yeah, no, no. My youngest would have got it. <laughs> young, oh, so that, the youngest is your favourite? Interesting, Trace. My youngest. Well, I love, that, I love that the, the husband that who you know can't swim, he doesn't, <laughs> he get, doesn't one. get one. No, no, no. You're listening to Nathan, Nat and Sean. Spare a thought for our friend Nathan, who I can't believe turned up to work today either. Why should, because I, why should I be here? The, the hardship he's had to endure. I lost my kettle over the weekend, <laughs> which meant I had to microwave bowls of water for tea. Bowls <laughs> of water. And then use a funnel to get and, it into and, the and cup. And so here I am thinking that I was affected neg- negatively, yeah. and then I then I heard my friend Natalie Locke's mm, story, mm. which which would have would have reckon... ended my, ended me. I reckon it went on for a month. Oh, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone. A month of um, the remote control not talking to the TV. What? And so I would have to get up and walk over and change the channel manually. I, I could use the Apple TV to, to watch streaming services, but to actual free-to-air TV and to turn it on and off, I had to get up and change change. To change the channel. Oh my god, is that how you watch the entire series of The Masked Singer? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Because that wouldn't be by choice. <laughs> Cassie's in Ellenbrook. Hi, Cassie. Hello. Hi, Cassie. Hey, Cassie. We're talking about um, how people are, are doing it the hard way. Um, what's happening? Yeah, so this was years and years ago. Um, so my washing machine broke down, and, um, you know, um, you know, I went to the laundromat for the bigger things, but sure. for the little things. I just um, invested in a thermomix. I thought I'm going to wash my underwear in the thermomix. 
You did not. Did you make a risotto? <laughs> <laughs> hot water and even put it on spin, put it in the basket, put it on spin. Are you joking? I hope you didn't chop them up at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Turn them into soup. Yeah. You washed your underwear in a thermomix. Did you then cook yep. it again yep. after that? Oh, yeah, it's fun. No, hot, boiling hot water, it's going to kill everything. Say, I didn't want to say what the food tastes like, but we all know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know where you're going. Um, the chowder. Cassie. I mean... Ten points for ingenuity, Cass. I guess. <laughs> but there's something a little bit off about that. Well, risotto is just hot, wet rice. So, yes. Um, so hot, wet knickers. Hot, wet knickers. Mm. Cassie. <laughs> Thank, you, Cass. Thank you for that image. We love it. Jason, hello. How are you going? Hey, Good, Chase. Chase. Okay, did you have to do something the hard way? Well, there's two things currently affecting me. The number one thing is my roller door won't go all the way down. So oh. I have to get out of the car and help push it down because it thinks it's hitting something and it keeps going oh. back up. Okay, that would so I'm so sorry, Jason. I'm oh. so sorry that you're going through this. And the yes. second thing is when I do get out of my car to put the roller door down, my front door handle snapped on the interior. So I have to put my window down and open my door <laughs> from the outside. <laughs> you look like such a hillbilly, oh. don't you, when you're out and about? Chase. Oh, trials and tribulations. I know. Are pretty hectic. Not- any <clears throat> any thoughts of getting it fixed? Oh, how could you? No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no way. It's well, not that severe. I manually <laughs> changed the channel on my TV for a month, so I hear you. Do you know what's sad <laughs> is when you do do it the hard way, but it becomes so easy to you, it becomes yes. the easy way until until someone else sees what you're doing. Yes, and like, then points what? out how hard it is, and then someday down the track, if you do get it fixed, you realise what was I doing? I know, but Jace is in it. He's in it right now. Jace is in it. Oh, Jace, I'm so sorry for your suffering. Thank you. (laughs) Jordan is in Mahogany Creek. Hi, Jordan. Hi, team. How are we going? Good. Now, talk to us about the hardships you've had to endure. Um, So, a little bit of backstory. So, I'm nearly 30 weeks pregnant Mm, mm. um, and our hot water system went probably a fortnight ago and it then came back. So it wasn't quite dead. It had a second second innings in yes. it, and it went last Wednesday. So we've been doing cold showers, boiling the kettle and filling up a bucket of water, having the cold shower, and then quickly tipping the bucket of water over our head, and then quickly getting out of the shower. There's no relaxing showers at our house at the moment. So it's sure. a cold shower, and then so you, then the last thing you do is to- pour the, the hot water over yourself so the memory is it was hot. Yes. But the majority of it was cold. Yep, yeah, like breathtaking... Yeah, yeah. and it has cold. been cold. Like the mornings have been freezing in the last few weeks as well. So that adds to yeah. that joy. Um, what about like washing your hair and things like that? Because that takes a bit more time under the water. Have you been able to do uh, that? Are you dipping your head in the No, bucket? no. So I went. we went to the in-laws last night, so I enjoyed every minute of that. Um, but, um, yeah, I said to my partner, I was like, you're going to have to help me like head over the sink and like sure. help me wash my hair because I'm not doing it in cold water. It's not no. happening. You know no. what? There's nothing worse than having a knock on the door and then having the people People rock up with their with their um little shower bags and, and their towels over their, their shoulders. Towels, like, hi, can we borrow your bathroom? <laughs> it must be terrifying though. Um, so early on in the pregnancy for your hot water to break. That's terrible. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, it's a hot water system joke it, uh, and a water's breaking joke. Yeah, right. combined together. It's all right, you, um, <laughs> it was really funny, but thanks. You're not getting the prize. No, thank you, Jordan. <laughs> Nathan, Nat, and Sean in podcast form. Uh, turns out that when you get really old, you can just do whatever you want. And we, as younger people, or at least younger than them, have to just let them get away with it. Yeah, so an old uh, an old duck, she um, <laughs> she stiffed me when we went to the petrol station and another guy too. Just, just swooped in, just didn't yep. wait. I'm not waiting for that. Yeah. I'm going to go straight to the front of the queue. Yeah, and then five minutes later, an old chook nat this time was the one who got me <laughs> in the car park. She really poultry. got me, mate. A lot of ancient poultry. <laughs> that would have been more infuriating. Oh, it was, oh, Katie. Oh, oh. No. Alicia's in Clarkson. Hello. Hey, how are you going? Great, Great Alicia. Alicia. Have uh, old people been taking liberties? Yes, they definitely have. So it was back at peak COVID time when yes. we had a toilet roll shortage. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah, it was hard enough to get any as it was. I waited till like first thing in the morning when it was opening, got in, got to the toilet roll aisle. There wasn't much left, but I'd got myself a decent pack for the family, so I was stoked. Continued to go on to do my rest of my shopping and I got to the dairy section. There was a few people around and there was an old lady and she was trying to get through and she said, do you mind? And she kind of pointed and I said, yeah, no worries. I've gone to move over. And she literally just grabbed the toilet roll out of my trolley (laughs) and put it in her own trolley and just just casually walked off. And I was like, 
I didn't even know what to say. I was so dumbfounded. <laughs> even the guy behind me, his jaw just dropped. And I just, like, put my hand up, like, what do I even do? You know what I mean? I got back to the toilet roll section and there was none, none left. Oh, oh no. of course. I, I mean, I love that she asked, do you mind? Yeah. But in such, yeah. a, in such a fashion that made you think she just wanted to get past. I mean, she's kind Yeah. She is a, yeah. yeah. She had manners, I give her that sort much, of. but like I could not believe it. I was just yeah. Alicia. I can't yeah. believe it either. At least you got stiff. In I'm, her defence though, you did when she said, Do you mind? You were like, Yeah, sure. Even though you moved yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> just like, <laughs> I just thought she wanted to get past me, not that she wanted to see my toilet roll. In her mind, she did everything right. (laughs) Well, Alicia, you didn't mind. I know, you got stitched up big time. Thanks, Leash. Jade's in Safety Bay. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Jade, Jade, did this happen to you very recently? Literally like 20 minutes ago, maybe 30, if that. So it's fresh. (laughs) Okay, talk us through what happened. I I was taking the girls to McDonald's for breakfast before school this morning because I just started a new school doing like the cool mum thing. Yeah, great And... We were at McDonald's, and you know how like, to have the double lines for the drive through sometimes? Yes. yes. So one of the drive through lines was closed and had a witch's hat in it, and then the other one that was open was like 10 cars long, and this old lady just comes up in her Camry, drives over the witch's hat, and goes straight <laughs> to the window. And <laughs> <laughs> and my five-year-old is like, what did that lady just do? I was like, let's not talk about it. <laughs> like, she got a way faster than the rest of us, but oh my God. Yeah, very <laughs> effective. I didn't feel it at all. No. no. Well, you know, a witch's hat is very bendy, so... But I think, Jade, another thing is they are... Ca- we're just learning how canny they can be. Un- That's right. And so she probably's yeah. gone, I can get away with this. Yes. And therefore I can dodge the 10 yeah. people who are in front of me. But, like, the witch's hats are huge. Like, I don't know. I know. <laughs> Good on her. Like, I mean, we were there for another 25 Good on minutes her. after she'd gone straight through. <laughs> but if that had been a 25-year-old that did that, you'd be furious, Up Jade. Wrong. I would get abused. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. <laughs> I probably wouldn't get served. I mean, a, a Camry is what gets it across the line, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. an, an old lady in a Camry. Amazing. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Oh, we're not worried about it when old people just push in line, take liberties. Well, we are learning. They do take the piss, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> really looking forward to that time when I can do that. <laughs> Me too. I just let my skin go so it happens sooner. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Stop using sunscreen. Now, Nicole, what have old people been doing to you? Oh, um, I went to the, this little berry farm not too far from home and I pulled up. I was just after one massive box of strawberries that they had. They are yes. so good. And then pull up and there's this massive two of us as well and I was like oh well best I get in then I realized on the other side of the bus it's a bus load of oldies like on their way in as well and oh, no. I, I can't get to the door at the same time you, yeah you quickened oh, you, your step didn't you you gotta yeah. quicken your step yeah. you gotta beat them yeah. in the car yeah yeah never got dodgy Absolutely. but then I was kind of <laughs> oh mate yeah and then um so we kind of got there at the same time and it was a bit of an eye contact like who was doing this first and then I was kind of thinking, how far does the respect to elders go? But next minute, she's put her um, walking stick out in front. So I'm like, okay, well, she's going first. But it's not only her. It's the entire bus load on frames and walkers and stuff behind her. So and hang I'm on. Like, she put, did she put her walking stick out like a barrier so that you couldn't, couldn't get, get past it? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, it was clear oh, that savage. she was going in. And this is a small little shop, like... So now not only did I let her in, but the whole the bus, bus load, load behind her, it was just like one after the other after the other. Um, and it's, so they've just filled up the entire little shop and then I'm like, great. It's like standing room yes. <laughs> in this thing. Um, so, and I could see in a little glass window, there is one box of strawberries left and they're all <laughs> looking around the shop. So I'm like, well, now I have to make a decision. So naturally, I well, maybe for me, I thought, why does my age and ability have to shut me down here? I'm dodging, ducking, weaving my way through. <laughs> yes, for this I was on the prize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. I was like, they've had their day in the sun to duck and move. <laughs> <laughs> so you're ducking You want to run the gauntlet. Yeah. Uh, straight back out of there, like, stay up. Yeah, so you <laughs> got them. You were victorious. Yeah. Oh, well oh, done. Yeah. Well yes, done. We love a success what story. What a great victory, beating all those little old ladies. <laughs> yeah, I know, you're a horrible person. Oh, uh, yeah, imagine them telling their story back at the know, home. I oh, know. this young... No respect. Yeah, yeah exactly. They were probably oh. looking for those strawberries, but yeah, they couldn't say it because right. they were blind. Exactly. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a hero, Nick. Um, we'll move on to Diana in Banks and Grove. Hi, Di. 
Hi. All right, Di. Hi, Di. Old people being taking liberties. What happened? Um, I was in Midland Shopping Centre. I had four kids at the time, very young, and it was pouring down with rain. And there was this car park right at the front of the shopping centre. And I waited for about just over five minutes um, <laughs> for someone to put their shopping in and reverse yes. out. And because the rain was so heavy, um, this old man decided when they reversed out, he just quickly went straight in and didn't care that I was sitting there for so long. Mm. Mm. That's oh, cheeky. my God, I was fuming. I mean, I was screaming in the car at him, but I don't know whether he heard me because he just shut the door and walked straight yeah, in. I was going to say, even if he did hear you, he would just pretend that he yeah. didn't. <laughs> just turn off his hearing <laughs> aid. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. No, that's perfectly legitimate. <laughs> Come parking spot. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Well, the elimination final between Fremantle and the Western Bulldogs is not far away. Just a few sleeps away, in fact. Sold out house at Optus Stadium. But the Bulldogs, they are kind of been the giant killers over the last couple of final series. They know how to play those big games. We thought we'd go to an absolute expert in this field. Um, (laughs) Our good friend Will Anderson, the maddest of Bulldog supporters. G'day, Will. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate the fact that you obviously couldn't get Chris Hemsworth, so it's nice <laughs> that you went to me instead. So thank you. We it's didn't amazing. even think to ask him, to be honest. And uh, we're uh, broadcasting from his balcony right now, which yes. looks like the backdrop looks like it's from Jurassic Park. Yes, it's it unbelievable <laughs> views well, there's been there, plenty Will. of water up there, I take it, Will. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, there's no, no, here's what I'll tell you, this is an absolute true story. So my house is on a hill, luckily, which is good when the area you live in floods. And so the top lawn, it takes two days if it stops raining for it to dry enough that you can mow the top lawn. The bottom lawn, because it's down the hill, takes about three or four days, you know, for all the water to go away for it to mow. For five months over summer, five months over summer, it only stopped raining enough that I could mow the top lawn. I could not (laughs) mow the bottom lawn in five months. And of course, the the wetter it got and the longer the grass grew, like, you know, the longer it would take. And so by the time, like, it actually got sunny enough for me to mow it down there, my house looked like it had a mullet. <laughs> so it was a little <laughs> the front, party down the back. <laughs> hey, so you're um, how far away from the nearest shop there? Uh, yeah, so, well, the nearest town, like, is a yeah. place called Mullumbimby, which people might know as the scientific cap- capital of Australia. Uh, they love science in Mullumbimby. They love science so much they have their own version of science. It's called pseudoscience. <laughs> and it's great, guys. <laughs> and try it. All you have to do is swallow a pack of pseudo for any uh, yes. of it to make sense. So, <laughs> it's good fun. But, yeah, no, it's been good living in this part of the world during the pandemic, I will say, because, I mean, short line for the vaccines. So, <laughs> everyone's always like, which one did you get? And I'm like, I got all of them. Exactly. I just go through the bin <laughs> behind the medical centre at the end of the day, like jab, 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 jab. <laughs> well, Will, I'm looking forward to seeing the Western Bulldogs come over to Perth. They've, mm. got, uh, they've had reasonable success over the journey. Um, how are you viewing this game? Well, uh, here's what I love. So th- we have a theory on my football podcast, Two yep. Guys, One Cup, an AFL adjacent podcast, uh, <laughs> and we call them uh, Bevo's Bottom Boys because yep. Bevo's Bottom Boys love to come from the bottom and has not caught on down at the club calling them the Bottom That's Boys. Weird. But this year, That's weird, isn't it? this year, Bevo's Bottom Boys are the most bottom of bottom boys. If we had kicked power one less bottom, goal, I would say <laughs> <laughs> we are the actual power bottom of the AFL. <laughs> we only got in by 0.3 of a percent, which means if we kicked one fewer goals in any of the games during the season, yes. we would have missed out. We would have been in ninth and not in the final. So that's as bottom as you can get. Like Drake style, started at the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> and then Fremantle, because you're all old Bulldogs guys. That's the club being yes. run by all bull- Bulldogs. So they know that Bevo wants to be the bottom boys. So what did, <laughs> what did Frio do? They go out on the track, they 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 ruin Nat Fife, they get him to pull out a hamstring, so he'll be out, and they're like, take that bottom boys. And the bottom boys are like, you know what? We see what you're doing. Libber's out. Libber's out. The bottom boys are back. Now, you'd written the Bulldogs off a few weeks ago because I listened to your podcast, Will, and you were talking about how, oh, yeah, well, my team's not going to be playing in September. And no. look what happened. He didn't count on Carlton coming good. Well, I mean, I kind of did, but you don't want to say it out loud, right? (laughs) Although we did say it out loud. I mean, that was the most comedic result of the season. That Carlton, I mean, because the thing I loved about this was, well, and Carlton fans know this. So midway through the season on our footy podcast, we were talking about how much we love Carlton. And all the Carlton fans were like, nah, we'll bugger this up. We probably won't even make the eight. And we're like, I'm not sure that's even statistically possible. (laughs) Well, it turns out it was. (laughs) By one goal. It was pretty amazing. And all they had to do was be in two incredibly winning positions, two games in a row and completely bugger it up. So (laughs) it was funny. 
<laughs> they had the Norm Smith medalist. They might have the Brownlow medalist, and they did not make the finals. That is, without a doubt, the funniest result of the season. <laughs> so good. What I, what it's interesting about the Western Bulldogs is um, Luke Beveridge. He loves a theme heading mm. into finals, mm. Nate. So I'm now that the name. finals are done, he, he'll come up with a theme. I remember mm. back in the day. Um, like once you pop, you can't stop yeah. or something. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It'll be something or along those lines. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was I hope it's Terry I hope Wallace, it's better than once you pop, you can't stop that. <laughs> like that, that is really. I mean, I know that like Bebo has like with his mustache. He is yes. actually like a lot of people know this. His model is the look on Mr. Pringle from the Pringles. Yeah, yeah. man, that is actually the look he's been going for, and. You, you know he's out of steam ideas when he's just looking around his hotel room the night before the game and he's like looking at the minibar and he's like, oh, it's a pap- packet of Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. That's it. That's it. <laughs> he's that's that this goes with that, it's his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.